y'all i am hope here at crafty hope and welcome i'm gonna work on days 19 20 and 21 of index card a day that is formerly known as icad it's a challenge from tammy garcia sometimes i use her prompts sometimes i don't um, my friend nina fickett also has mixed media icad prompts and again sometimes i use them sometimes i don't i like to show those prompts uh, at the beginning of each of the cards and i go in not knowing if I'm going to use them or not. On this day, the, the prompts were alternating and staples, and I don't use them. I did toy a little bit with the alternating in there. Um, I don't even think I'm going to show that to y'all because it was just some fiddly stuff that ended up not working out. <laughs> so, um, I am beginning this one the way I begin most of my cards, which is with some collage, just scrap paper. I'm sticking it down in this case with some fluid matte medium, and then I dried it, I think. Um, once I had all that down, I've got a little bit of white gesso and a brayer, and I'm going to just put that over the top of the card to kind of push back some of that collage, some of the, um, the papers feeling so separate and then i got a couple sprays that was a lindy's spray in i think it's ponderosa pines i will try to list that below and then that's a tattered angels spray again i'll put it in the description box below and let you know what that is and it didn't spray so i kind of just you know got it on the card and I'm using a brush to move these around a little bit. And y'all, I'm telling you, I did this several weeks ago. And looking at this card, I love it. And I keep going, how did I get those colors? How did I get this on there? <laughs> so um, I was happy to see it in my editing. I was like, oh yeah, a couple of sprays. That worked beautifully. And then for a little touch of brown, I reconstituted some dried up instant coffee so you can see I just put a little water in there mix it up and I'm gonna paint with it on there blending it with some of that those greens and blues that are on there and then I will dry it now I like to dry a lot between layers so you're gonna see lots of breaks in this because yeah I work in layers upon layers lots of wet and yeah that's what I do this is a Tim Holtz stamp. I believe it's called Ledger Script. And I'm using another Tim Holtz product, which is Distress Oxide in Black Soot. And I put that down on the card for additional texture in the background. I needed something black, and I was like, ugh, that, that's, yeah, that script does perfect. I've got this little zipper bag with a bunch of smaller scrap fabric pieces and I pulled out that ruffle and was like that's what I'm going to use and you can see I pulled out a bunch of other fabrics there and that was where I was going to try to do alternating. Y'all I'm not going to use any of those just that ruffle and yeah. I did use a mechanical pencil to scribble in the background to get some movement and then for an additional pop that's a Stibolo Woody crayon that yeah I used scribbled that and I will activate it with a little bit of water but you can see I'm not activating all of it just a couple little areas to get a little bit of blending of it and I think then I will probably yep dry that <laughs> so once that's dry I felt like I needed a pop of white or something on there so I've got my gesso I watered down just a little bit and splattered across the card. And again, I'll dry it. Yep. <laughs> because sometimes I don't know what I'm going to do next. So I go ahead and dry it so I can go on to the next thing. And if that's uh, something, I don't know, it's going to be something wet, I'll just have to dry it again. You know, sometimes I like to blend several wet things together, but a lot of times, no, I want it separate and layered. So for a focal, I decided to pull in one of these Tim Holtz photo strips. And I'm going to clip off the girl on the bottom. So she, I like her. She's a fun little image. I like the amount of darkness she has on there. I felt that paired well with kind of the light colors in the ruffle. But the more I look at her, y'all, the more it felt like a yearbook photo photo from like the late 80s early 90s like she could be from any time and she looked like every friend I had in middle school or high school <laughs> somehow all of a sudden so 
it, it bothered me a bit. So I was like, okay, I really need to age this photo somehow. So I'll start by scruffing up the edges with the side of my scissors but then I was like now I want something more so I pull out it's it's another Tim Holtz and tonic tool it's a um I think it's an edge distressor or something like that I'll I'll try to link to it as well and it's got like little razor blades in there that will scruff that up really well I do pull in a little bit of sandpaper that was sitting on my desk so I'm doing what I can to make this feel a little bit old and you can see I'm not focused a whole lot on that left side because I knew I was going to tuck it under that that ruffle and it wouldn't be seen. So that is a little bit of Distress Ink in Walnut Stain that I'm going around the edges, going around the top, trying to get, again, more of an aged feel to it. Oh, y'all, it was, it was killing me. <laughs> I kept looking at her going, gosh, I feel like I know her. Like, I possibly have her photo somewhere in, in one of my scrapbooks or something. <laughs> So there's a lot of futzing here trying to make this feel just a little bit older, a little bit grungier, something. And in a second, I am going to pull in some watercolors. They are metallic watercolors from Prima Marketing. And I'm going to use the black for the most part to go around the the background because what I'm trying to do is give that like tin type feel to her you know if you get a tin type how the light reflects a little weird you get kind of a uh, like an oil slick coloring in the background um, I did use another color there but I can't tell you because it's off camera probably yep yeah, it's a pink <laughs> And so I'm just trying to get some of that like oil slickiness going in the background. It didn't do a great job with that. So I dried it and then I came back in with another Lindy spray. This one is, it's some kind of gunmetal color. And I went around the back. You can see kind of tracing it, that background a little bit. I think, I, oh look, I just used my finger to, to do it. <laughs> to really cover it up. On there I did get over her head I'll fix that in a second because the Lindy's like the watercolors is water reactive so I did try that you can see how it like sealed up it got a little more matte in the background and I yeah I could see a little bit you see I'm like eh, that was okay it, it was better so I'm gonna take a paintbrush here in a second and move that little bit of ink or watercolor or whatever it is that got across the top of her head that was bothering me and uh, I might try it again. We'll see. Am I going to try it again? Who knows? No, I don't think so. It was, yeah, that was just a little bit of water. So I'm going to go, yeah, in a couple other little spots, just trying to bring that color around on there and still trying to feel a little more aged. So I will try this, I suppose. Yep. <laughs> and futz with it just a little bit more. I think I even bring the um, uh, paintbrush back in of water. I may do that off camera because I, like I said, I clipped this video way down. Even sped up at two times speed, this video was like an hour and 10 minutes long. So <laughs> I did quite a bit of, of chopping down and speeding up things to get it down. So I'm using Fabri-Tac to glue down both that photo booth image and I'll also use it to get my ribbon down. Glued down. Yeah. Those are the words I mean. <laughs> so the Fabri-Tac is a um, it's very slow moving but I, I really like how it works to quickly and securely glue things down. So I have those. It's looking really great, but I wanted, a, I don't know, it's got plenty of texture on it, but I wanted more texture. First, I'm going to ink up the edges of this with more of that walnut stain distress ink. And you can see the embroidery floss sitting on my desk that I matched to go with the colors that are in that background. But I decided, let me first find a word. I pulled out this little tin I have of words from books and other things that I've cut down took me a little while to find just what I wanted because I felt like if I put the word where I wanted it I would know where I wanted to stitch because I knew I was going to bring in some stitches so I inked up around that word and now I've got to figure out where I'm going to put it this 
card itself was a little overthought, but y'all, I think it's, I don't know. I, all three of these are very textured, very, have very clunk, clunky, I wouldn't, maybe not clunky, chunky, maybe chunky is the word, very 3D elements on them, and I love that, and I'm struggling right now in my iCAD process to get some of those 3D elements on there, but I'm finding that the ones in which I do add those kind of pieces onto my iCADs, I love more. And it's that assemblage artist in me and found object artist in me that is um, kind of yearning for that. And I think as I uh, move forward, I, I'm going to try to do it more, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. So I've got that teal floss on there and I am going to make some French knots just scattered around on the card. I have sped this up uh, because, yeah, it, it it's a little bit of a long process and I wanted to shorten the video a little bit more. So you can still get to see like where I put them and how I put them, but I'm not going to make you watch it in real time or, yeah. So to make a French knot, um, I encourage you to maybe go find somebody else that's teaching it, but you can kind of see what I'm doing, pulling up my thread from behind wrapping the thread around my needle so pulling up wrapping my thread around the needle and then putting the needle back in in a slightly different spot over from where I came through and then carefully pulling that needle back through like that there so I might make a couple more of these French knots I do love that pop of teal on there especially it brings it onto the photo and brought it on to that ruffle as well so that was it was kind of perfect so once I get all of these on here I'm going to quickly tie off the the back of the thread and I think that will be it to finish up this card I'll give you a quick look at the finished card but I'll have some more detailed pictures at the very end of this video for you so, once I get this tied off and give you that look, we will get to card number 20. Alright, so for day 20 of the 100, not the 100 day project, ICAD. My goodness, y'all, I'm still hopping between those two sets of videos. If you haven't seen some of my 100 day project videos, I do have, um, I do have a playlist for that that I'll link in the upper right corner if you're interested in that. But so for ICAD day 20, the Days the Yellow prompt is gold and the mixed media ICAD prompt was gauze. And I definitely knew I could use both of those to bring elements in, but I struggle with the gauze because I tried to use medical gauze. And you'll see that I'm gonna I've clipped out a huge portion of it. That's the bulk of what made this video so long was some of my like experimentation <laughs> with that cause that I had to just take all of that out because it was it was a hot mess you'll see some of it here and just you know I kept some of it in so you could see the hot mess but I'm not gonna have you see see me making the hot mess so once again I used my fluid matte medium and glued down some scraps and I am going to dry that and come back in with some gold craft paint this is y'all I don't even know it's um cream coat delta cream coat I think is the brand and I love this color I don't know if they make any more this is one of the oldest containers of craft paint I own <laughs> And I can't get rid of it because I love this gold. So I put just little dabs onto the card, as you saw, and then use my brayer to spread it around. And once again, I have my gesso out that I will put down and just put a little bit of white to push everything like cohesively together. I feel like I'm doing this even now on all of my cards. It feels so good to kind of combine all of that collage I've done into one with that little bit of of white gesso. I, I don't know. It's what I do. 
So I've brought in a, I've got a hand carved stamp that I've inked in the upper right corner, um, but I decided before I put it down, I wanted to put down some of this Cracked Pistachio Distress Oxide Spray because I love this Cracked Pistachio and the Abandoned Coral together. I don't know why, um, but yeah, they work for me. So I sprayed and spritzed and splattered a little bit of that <laughs> Cracked Pistachio on there. I'm going to pick some of it up with a baby wipe because uh, it, yeah. And then I think I'm going to dry it, yep, before I come in with that, yeah, like I said, I've already inked that dis that stamp. So I'm going to go ahead and put it down. The Distress Oxides sprays and splatter, uh, yeah. For some reason, the Distress Oxide the, doesn't dry the same way other, like, inks and things do. And you'll see that in the next card, card 21, um, yeah, how that worked out for me. <laughs> So I stamped that hand curve stamp in a few places. And what I like to do when I use especially the Distress Oxides, because they are water reactive, is I like to blend the edges. Or sometimes it's the inside of a stamp. Or there's just something I love, that, that like blendy color that you get with the Distress Oxides or anything water reactive. Now I decided I wanted some splatters, so I'm going to put a little bit of that abandoned coral down, grab a watery paintbrush, um, I did spray that with some water, and then splatter a little bit in that background. Yeah, trying to anyway. I think that brush was not the best choice, but I got it to work. And that was just a piece of like packaging or something that was just like an acetate that I stamped onto so I could wet it and all of that. Then I dried all of this and decided to come in with my water-based black Sharpie paint pen or paint marker and make some splotchy marks. These are just little scribbles. You can kind of see how I'm making a scribble to get some marks on here. I needed something dark. You can see that this is all very pastel-y and, and it was feeling too sweet for me. So yeah, the black needed to come in and I do like a bit of mark making to add more texture and interest to the backgrounds. So um, I am finding as I work on this that I have a bit of a pattern I do with all of the stuff. I like to put stuff in the upper right corner across the middle and then over to the left side. Watch some of my future ones or my past ones. I've got a whole playlist of these iCads and you might be able to see that I've got this pattern going on. <laughs> I don't know why. So I have brought gold in already in that background. It peeks through in a couple little spots, but I decided for more gold, I am going to use this Uniball Signo Gold gel pen. And I start by making some plus signs in the background, but decide that that's not really what I wanted. So instead, um, I end up putting X's over top of the plus signs, there, so they're like little stars almost. Yeah, I was like, I don't know. Yep, so here I go, going back into every single one of them and putting an X over that plus sign. So they're just little stars, little gold stars, I guess, makes sense. Um, especially with what I'm going to end up doing for the focal here in, in just a bit. All right, so I am finishing up those stars and I, I struggled with this one. This one definitely took me a while. Like I said, I tried to bring different things. I pulled out buttons at one point. I pulled out all kinds of stuff. Now, since I had the black on there, I decided I needed white. And this is a big white out pen. So you kind of squeeze it and push it at the same time. And you get white marks. Now, what I like about the white out products is unlike other white things, they don't soak in as much to the water soluble stuff you've got in the background like if I put a little bit of gesso or some other like a white stamp or something it would soak up those distress oxide products so that it didn't have the same white to it whereas the white out stuff doesn't do that near as much okay so here is that medical gauze that I have and you can see I'm going to stretch it here Boop. And I played with it. I put some of the inks on it. I put all kinds of stuff on it. And do you see that hot mess over on the right? It is horrible. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to be using that. 
So I do decide to ink up the edges with Distress Ink in Walnut Stain again. Here I'm like trying to play with maybe a white one. And y'all know, I was like, okay, I am going to cheat. And I'm going to grab cheesecloth and pretend that cheesecloth is gauze because it is a gauzy material. So I, yeah, I was trying to be very literal in my use of ga actual gauze, but no, I was like, you know, uh-uh, I'm going to do something I know I like the look of, and that's this. So I hate I wasted some, some gauze that I might, that I had to take out of my first aid kit <laughs> to get, but it's fine. I can replace that. So I'm loving the look of this fluffy cheesecloth. It kind of looks like a cloud to me. And that's exactly what I wanted. It was like a fluffy, fluffy cloud looking. I did take a mechanical pencil again and do some scribbles for movement a bit in the background. It's just one of those things I like. And I'm using the, what is that stuff? Fabri-Tac again to go across where I want to put I was having a hard time that needed to be cleaned out or something and then I'll stick down my gauze or my cheesecloth right on top my replacement gauze and I go and like I said I futz with a couple different things and finally was like hey I put these little stars across there what if I bring in this little chipboard star that I have and I can't remember if that's from the Dollar Tree or something I picked up at Michael's but yeah um, I'm going to use my little jelly plate it's a three by five jelly plate to put my gold paint on and basically paint the chipboard that way I found this is the easiest way to paint like a chipboard thing or some kind of fiddly thing that has a lot of holes um, without clogging the holes up completely so yeah I put it on the jelly plate picked it up with that star and yeah easy peasy lemon squeezy and by the time I get all this put up it's dry because <laughs> it's just such a thin layer and I, I really love that method so I start to try to use the Fabri-Tac on there and was having trouble with it and decided, yeah, you see me, I'm like, ugh. So I ended up putting it up and grabbing my E6000 <laughs> and putting on that star because, yeah, I was going to have to go through, and this is going to be a whole process in itself. So I'm going to put that onto my fluffy cheesecloth there. And I'm going to hold it and I'm going to put a weight on it. And in a second, I'm going to take it back off and glue it some more. So I've pulled out these Tim Holtz metallic stickers because I've got, you know, and they've got the gold writing on them, which again, I've got gold in here so many ways without it being like over the top gold. So it worked out kind of great. But you see, I had to bring the E6000 in again and glue it down there. And I kept checking because I... I needed that star to make contact with the card and not just with the cheesecloth. And I needed what was, yeah, some of that cheesecloth that's back there. Also, yeah, everything needed to have a little bit more contact with the card as opposed to each other. So I end up grabbing my... I clothespins I think in just a second to clamp it all together and make sure it's holding it it's, yeah it's still just not holding it flat to the surface like I need it to so that's when I decided to bring in my clothespins which are my like basically clamps they're my craft room clamps <laughs> sorry my head got in the way I was trying to reach where they were my little tra tabletop trash bucket so I grabbed from there, I'd taken the time to figure out what phrase I want. And because I've got so many stars, I decided to put make a wish on there because, you know, wishing upon a star is kind of a, a known theme. And I just used the uh, Uhu to glue it down and that's done pretty good. I may come back in later and do something a little bit more, but that's it guys. I'm going to give y'all also a look at this and we will get to card 21. The props for card 21 are crystal and sponge and I think I showed you or I'm gonna show you I had a sponge already just like a natural sponge it was already wet so I knew I was gonna be able to bring that in but first I'm gonna collage once again scrap papers um that silicone fake face 
spreader thing and fluid matte medium. So I've sped this up once again because it's just getting stuff down. So um, I knew I was going to use that sponge in some kind of way. And y'all, this card whew, took a turn I did not know it was going to do. This card surprised me completely. But like I said, with the, uh, the last two, it has a 3D element I didn't realize I was going to bring into it. And y'all, it works out so beautifully. I'm so happy with how this one comes together. But first, we've got to get through this collage. I, Granted, I don't know why I feel like I have to do this much collage on each of these cards but I think for me because I end up covering it up I never see those little bits of things um oh and there's a little bit of lace I put on there for yeah which is odd I don't tend to put that kind of texture in my collage layer but I did for this one but I feel like it gives me the busy hands gives me a moment to like rev up my engine my creative engine and get started so once I tried all of that collage I have pulled in this distress oxide reinker. I believe the color is salvaged patina something patina is it salvaged patina that seems right I can't be sure um, but I put it in my little palette there and picked it up with that sponge and I'm just dabbing it on my card in a couple places I had no idea what for or what I was gonna do but I thought okay well this sponge I now have sponge I've used sponge <laughs> so I'm gonna dry this y'all I dry this and I dab it off and oh wait no I do splatter too first okay um but it never really quite gets dry I will say, tell you that the crystal prompt had me baffled for a minute but then I remembered I had this embossing powder that was labeled crystal and I was like okay I can put that on there and I thought it was going to be crystal clear when I opened it though I could see those sparkles in it do you see those sparkles I had no idea it was gonna be as sparkly as it's going to be <laughs> so I put that embossing powder down shook off that excess and um, I'm going to put it do as you do with embossing powders get the excess from oh see, I, that bottom corner didn't I don't know what's going on there. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to cover it up in a little bit. <laughs> so I'm going to put the excess back in the container as you do with embossing powders. And then I'm going to heat it. So embossing powders are like basically a powdery plastic. Once you heat them, they combine and meld and form into a solid kind of glossy material. Um, I'm probably doing a really poor job of explaining that, <laughs> but you can kind of see how it like gets a little bit darker and liquidy looking. Yeah. So it was much more sparkly than I had anticipated than I thought really went with that color. So I was like, all right, let's add some grunge to this <laughs> in the way of using instant coffee. So I reconstituted that instant coffee once again, and I've got a paintbrush and I'm going to paint on this page, trying to get more of that grungy feeling that is more my style because this sparkle sparkly, not so much me. No, <laughs> So I will dry this, uh, trying to keep in mind that I don't want to heat it too much because I don't really want to remelt that embossing powder. So I will dry it and then come back in with a baby wipe that I'm going to take off of some of the embossed areas. So I have found that this Instant Coffee is much like the Distress products, is water reactive. So I took away a lot of it and I'm going to come back in and just re splatter it again. Yeah, because I, I, a lot of my dark brown was gone after I did that. So now I am, yeah, for some reason, I'm cleaning my table. I don't know, y'all. <laughs> So I then dry that those coffee splatters and decide, okay, it's still not quite grungy enough. How about some crackle paste? So this is the uh, Deco Arts crackle paste that I'm using a uh, palette knife to, to spread on here. And again, some of this is to help me balance that sparkle with my own like grungy 
needs. <laughs> That's all this is. The sparkle really threw me for a loop. And so, but I have used the crystal and I have used sponge. It's, it's done. But let's, let's bring it back around. So as with most crackle pastes, once I get the spread out, it is best if you walk away. Let it air dry. Leave it there. Don't mess with it. Don't try to heat dry it. The, the cracks do not form as well when you try to heat dry it. Um, so that's what I did. I came back and had decided that I'm going to use these Tim Holtz paper doll portraits. I was showing y'all there that I had misspelled portraits when I made that label. I, and it makes me mad every time I've got to go get the, the label maker again and redo it. <laughs> So here I am going to ink the edges of this. She was feeling not quite grungy enough for me. So I'm going to ink all of her edges as well as kind of blend that walnut stain onto her to give her for some reason because she is such a bigger uh, image than the usual paper dolls. She, her white face felt so very white. And I was like, oh my gosh, girlfriend, you, you need some age to you. <laughs> so, but every time I touched it, I would wipe off that distress ink. So yeah, there, me trying to blend it. I'm just wiping it off. <laughs> so I have to put it back on there. And then I touch it again and then it wipes back off. <laughs> it was, ha ha ha, y'all. Uh, okay, see, look, <laughs> I'm still trying to put it on there. So I do try to scruff up her edges a little bit to try to keep some of that ink on there. I go across the bottom and I knew that she was just a tad too big for my card and I was not bothered by that. I was going to let her hang off a little bit, both the top and the bottom. So, cause I did, you know. I know she's just a little too big for the card, but that's okay. I like that she's pushing boundaries. How about that? Um, okay, so what did I do next? I looked at her for quite a while trying to decide what else needed to be done. And of course, it is inking up some of that crackle paste. So the cracks felt a little more grungy. Yeah. Because it was feeling too white, too. Yep. So I did that. Looked at her again. I still haven't inked the edges of this card. And we, we all know that's coming, don't we? Um, and I think it's funny that this card and the previous card, I have stuff hanging off of the edges, which I never do, y'all. Um, but yes, there there we go. Inking the edges of that card. And y'all, this is just like a finishing touch for me. It, it, I, I like how it feels when it's inked. And for some reason, I felt, once again, I needed something black in there to, to just have some marks. So I've got a Stabilo All Pencil in black that I am dipping into my cup of water. I'm making these almost like tally marks where I'm making like three little scribbles and then pulling the, the pencil through it. So I, I don't know. Um, it's, it's what felt right. So I'm going to put her on there to kind of see, and you can see I don't have anything over on that right side, any of that black marks over there. I wish I had put them in a different place, but I think I was trying to avoid the crackle. So I toyed around with some other ideas for a while and decided to, I had just picked up in a, um, at an estate sale, this huge bag of these little floral picks. Uh, I don't even know, um, but I found these little blue ones in there and decided she is wearing that huge corsage, and I thought, okay, well, I can add to her corsage with some actual flowers. Well, you know what I mean, some 3D flowers. So I used an all to poke a hole in her. I could have used a punch, but I was trying to not make too big of a hole, but I'm finding that my all, yep. I'm having to push it a good ways in to get these flowers like all the way in there. So, and at first I thought I was just going to put just this one flower. Y'all, I'm going to put three flowers because, you know, great things come in threes or something. So I look at her and I'm like, okay, well that's okay. What if I put another one? <laughs> So and I thought about putting different flowers because I could see that her corsage was composed of several different flowers, but all the ones I pulled out, I did not like as well as the idea of making, um, of putting three of these little light blue roses on there. So, 
that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just kind of pushing the wires off to the side. And I'm trying to get these as uh, close to her as possible. So once I get, let's see, let's get this last one in here. I'm trying to make sure, yeah, that I get it pushed all the way down as flat as I can. And then taking that wire and bending it over. And this is some fairly thin wire. It is wrapped a little bit in places. And then I'm going to trim off just a little bit of the excess so it doesn't get too wily. And I'm going to use a little bit of scotch tape to, to hold it down. I figured that might as well. Packing tape would be fine. I didn't want anything that was going to be very likely to peel up. So um, I'm, I keep some scotch tape on my desk. Yep. I'm going to grab that. And this is just the cheap stuff, too, from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> And we'll put that right on there, making sure it makes contact with the back of her. And see, I touched all over her again, so I had wiped off my ink. I do ink those flowers, too, to give them the same kind of age that the rest of this card and her have gotten. Um, and then I go and grab, I think I'm going to go grab some, yep, some foam square things so I stick those on the back of her making sure I put them also on top of and like so these bottom ones will be both on the tape and on the the back so that it's yeah but I felt like lifting her like that gives her some additional dimension and shadow so I will stick those down in a second and then off camera for some reason, I went and grabbed my small talk stickers. So while I'm taking these little backs off of there, I'm telling you. And I decided on the phrase, have an open heart, because the, <laughs> those flowers are on her chest, like over her heart, and they're coming out. And so it just felt kind of like a little, a little tongue in cheek. So that's why I'm going to stick down. I think I'm going to use my glue stick to add it a bit of additional stick to it and then we are finally done I believe unless I'm going to ink up the edges of this it's very possible y'all it's very possible and then I'm going to give you a look at this card and all the rest of them if you have any questions please ask away um, and of course let me know which one's your favorite right now I am leaning towards number one and number three and I can't decide between the two of them so and that's just because they're blue um that's yeah look at that blue i love it anyway okay guys thank you so much for watching i will be back with more icads and 100 day projects and whatever else i can get my crafty hands into thanks for watching bye